This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are navigating the journey. Navigating the journey is dedicated to exploring the options and choices for end-of-life care and to assist people to talk about their wishes. It's time to transform our culture so we shift from not talking about end-of-life to talking about it. It's time to share the way we want to live our lives at the end of our lives. And it's time to communicate about the kind of care we want and don't want. We believe that the place for this to begin is not in the intensive care unit. One of the areas we talk about least, least, is breast cancer. This is October, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and we are going beyond the pink ribbon. We are highlighting breast cancer disparities among African American women, Overall, white women are slightly more likely to get breast cancer, but African-American women are more likely to die from it. In fact, breast cancer mortality is roughly 40% higher in African-American women than white women. Why? Why? Even looking at the mortality rates, which have decreased for all women since 1990, the decreases began earlier and greater for white women than they are for African-American women. Why? Behind every great movement stands a team of passionate organizers, communicators, and visionaries. Meet ours. Our guest today is Linda Mitchell, President of Honolulu Black Nurses Association. The Honolulu Black Nurses Association mission is to represent and provide a forum for black nurses to advocate and implement strategies to ensure access to the highest quality of health care for persons of color. The National Black Nurses Association represents 150,000, that's a big number, African-American registered nurses, licensed vocational practical nurses, nursing students, retired nurses, from the USA, Eastern Caribbean, Africa, and 92 chartered chapters in 35 states. Wow. Linda. Hi. Good hi. morning. Good morning. What a pleasure to have you. Oh, I'm so thankful to be here, and thanks for having me here on the show today. Well, this is October, mm -hmm. Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and what better than to talk about somebody that's spends your life taking care of people with cancer. Yes. All kinds of cancers, right. but, but especially. This one was troubling to me because it lumps African-American women yes. in one category. And for our audience who may or may not know this, we as African-Americans, which is something we call ourselves, or somebody else called us, Yes. Somebody else made up that term. <laughs> we, I say we are the indigenous people of, Ameri of the United States mm -hmm. because we don't exist anywhere else in the world. We were created here in the United States. We were bought from different places of Africa, dropped in the United States. Yeah. Everybody knows the slave master cohabitated with the slaves and thus... We have all of these mixtures that don't exist anywhere else in the world. And when I read this about black people, African Americans as they call us, I'm still, for anybody that doesn't know, I'm still back in when black was beautiful because I really like being black and beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stuck. Anyway, to lump us all in this one category seem somehow, especially since it's scientific, that they missed the boat. So you tell me, what is it that looks at black women and why is it the mortality rate is higher? Okay, basically uh, we have late diagnosis, meaning that women come in and when they see their doctor, 
they're late in the stages of breast cancer. Usually they're at a stage four, so we don't have a high survival rate. We don't get it as often, uh, but we die more often because we have that late diagnosis. And we're trying to get women to understand that having breast cancer is not a death sentence. You know, if you go to your doctor early enough, you're getting your yearly mammograms, and that starts at age 40. Uh, they want women at age 20 to start getting clinical uh, breast exams at least every three years, and then at 40, you get them at, at least once a year. Uh, what we're finding is that we even have uh, women that are insured that are not going to get their breast uh, mammograms yearly, and that's a big concern. Uh, Susan G. Coleman has taken on a project and they're funding, it's a $27 million uh, funding that Coleman is lot launching for African American uh, uh, women for health equity and health initiatives to fight the disparities um, in breast cancer outcomes for, after, for the African American community. Now, in the Obamacare, mm -hmm. wasn't I, and I say wasn't because I don't know what they're doing now with, with uh, quote, Obamacare. But wasn't mammogram, wasn't that one of those things that was preventive? Wasn't that listed yeah, that's, in that? Yeah, that's preventative care, uh, and it's um, something that they can get at no charge to themselves. So uh, they really need to um, be educated and be aware of, anything that changes with them as far as their, their body. They need to know their risk. Uh, and that's looking at your f family history to make sure that you're aware that if you have a family familiar history, then it may put you at high risk for breast cancer. My mom died at uh, an early age with uh, breast cancer. I think I was about five years old. So uh, I'm so compassionate about breast cancer, and that's why I'm always in the community. Uh, educating and, and helping women to understand the need to have their breast cancer exams because I feel like no little girl should ever live without their mom. Right. And so we have to take care of ourselves. Now, well, I've had breast cancer, which is, you know, I talk about it. Mm -hmm. My daughter, they refused to give her a mammogram and said, oh, no, you don't. But she said, my mother's had it. And this right. was at the time she mm -hmm. was... 35, I guess it was, mm -hmm. or something like that. It says, oh, no, you're too young. And she really had an awful time getting them to understand that this is what she wanted. Right. And at, at back, and I'm not sure of when that was, but insurance companies uh, weren't covering them until you reached a certain age. That has since changed. If you have a familiar history of breast cancer, your primary care provider should be uh, providing you with the means to get that mammogram. Now, what about people that have Quest, the, you know, the, mm -hmm. the state uh, mm -hmm. Medicaid? Right. Are they, can they get the mammograms? Yes, uh, uh, Medicaid um, uh, members and women can get breast, breast cancer exams yearly mm -hmm. as, uh, so it, uh, we also have men that get breast cancer, yes. which is really kind of rare, but it is something that does happen. So we do include them in that, too, if they have a family history as well. But yes, uh, Medicaid uh, members can get uh, breast cancer uh, exams. Now, let's make the difference here. Medicaid is paid for by the state. That's correct. Medicare is federal. Right. And so those of us over 65 get Medicare. Right. But the state of Hawaii has more than 300,000 people on Medicaid. That's correct. And so is there an outreach to them? Uh, yes. They are uh, managed under the Quest Integration uh, mm -hmm. Program. Um, and actually, I work for United Health, and we run the Medicaid uh, program for the state. So we have... Um, members that are enrolled, they're, sometimes they're dual enrolled in both Medicare and Medicaid, and they are uh, and can get all their preventative exams 
without any cost to themselves. The state takes, does pay Good. for that. Mm -hmm. So there is an outreach, yes. not just, I mean, okay, so we, we're talking about it, but do we, do we really reach for those people? Because it seems to me that people that are on Quest, there should be a more aggressive outreach to them because they, that is what all of us pay for, for their health care. Right. It seems to me that they should be primary in reaching out to those people to reduce some of those costs. Uh, they are reached out to by, they have uh, community health workers, they have uh, what they call field service coordinators that go out and have a, a caseload of, of members. We also have those that, we have social workers that interact with a lot of our Medicaid uh, members. And we also have an initiative to make sure that the gaps in care, such as um, things that they need, like their colonoscopy is done, they're, they're getting their mammograms, if they're diabetic, they're getting their diabetic checks and so forth. Uh, so they are reaching out to these um, members. Um, and so we are really striving to make sure that they are getting these preventative exams because that could be the um, determination of whether they have an, a disease that can be prevented. You know, if you go early enough, you know, you have a great survival rate in those folks that do reach out and, and have their preventative exams done as they are supposed to. Well, tell me how many, I've heard all these different, that there are different kinds of breast cancer. Tell us what, what those are and what that means, different types of cancer, breast well, cancer. Well, they, it, it depends. They have uh, different types of breast cancer. Some breast cancers are more aggressive than others. And um, Susan G. Coleman, in fact, has went beyond the pink ribbon. It's mm -hmm. more than pink with them now because they really uh, are striving to make sure that women get in early. We've, they're even finding breast cancer in women at the ages of 25, uh, which years ago that was never a um, diagnosis that was you know, projected in these women. And now we find that women are getting it much earlier and it's more aggressive. Uh, in African-American women, uh, tumors seem to grow a little bit faster so we are really uh, warning our African-American uh, uh, ladies to make sure that they're getting their breast exams because it's imperative that they, they're caught early. If they're caught in the late stages, then the survival rate is, is, is higher, I mean lower. Oh, and yeah. then uh, if it's caught early enough, then it's much lower and it can be uh, diagnosed and treated and they, they usually come out pretty good. So oh. the metastasis, and the, the, the breast cancer uh, tumors that are growing faster are, you know, uh, what the cancer research is uh, really looking into now. Why is this happening um, and what they can do to, to, you know, to get rid of those types of cancers. Well, we need to take a break mm -hmm. and we'll be back in a minute. And then I would like to talk about the Black Nurses Association. Okay. 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 We'll be right back. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Guys, don't forget to check me out right here, the Prince of Investing. I'm your host, Prince Dykes. Each and every Tuesdays at 11 a.m. Hawaii time, I'm going to be right here. Stop by and hear from some of the best investment minds across the globe and real estate, finances, stocks, hedge funds, managers, all of that great stuff. Thank you. We all play a role in keeping our community safe. Every day, we move in and out of each other's busy lives. It's easy to take for granted all the little moments that make up our every day. Some are good, others not so much. But that's life. It's when something doesn't seem quite right that it's time to pay attention. Because only you know what's not supposed to be in your every day. So protect your every day. If you see something suspicious, say something to local authorities. Hi, I'm Marcia, and we are visiting with my dear, dear friend of a couple hundred years, <laughs> Linda Mitchell, who is president of the Honolulu Black Nurses Association. And they are having an event. The 
Honolulu, and I've got to read this to get it right. The Honolulu Black Nurses Association partner in pursuit of the promise of because. Breast cancer awareness, understanding, screening, survivor support, and empowerment. It's a community forum and fashion show on Saturday, the 28th at 4 p.m. at Croc Center in Kapolei. Yes. Did, did I get that right? Yes. And can we get a picture of this? Can we? No? No? Where is everybody? So tell me, Linda, about the Honolulu Black Nurses. How long have you been, how long has the organization been together? Well, we, we were founded by our founder was Mercedes Foster. Um, oh. And that was under Governor Cayetano's oh, right. uh, term. And uh, we have been on the island for almost 18 years. Uh, we are a um, branch of the National Black Nurses Association, and our branch offices are in uh, Maryland. Um, we are about, we are very transient here with our, our uh, membership, but we are always recruiting. We work in partnership with other organizations such as the Susan G. Coleman, the American Cancer Society, um, the American Kidney Foundation. And so a lot of times when they're out in the community, you will probably see some of our nurses there working with them uh, to get their message out and their word out. And then us uh, as nurses at educating on the importance of you know, health and medical exams and seeing your primary care doctor and just getting those pre preventative exams uh, yearly. Now, you, you mentioned transit, uh, so that means you have nurses coming and going with the military. Correct, because our nurses are usually, a lot of our nurses are here and they're active duty. Mm -hmm. And so when they PCS to another um, place, then we lose our nurses. So we are in always in an active recruiting uh, stage. So if there's any nurses out there that are RNs or LPNs, we welcome you to join us. Um, and like I said, we are a branch of the National Black Nurses Association, which I'm really proud of. So is it just, is it open to everyone regardless of race? Yes, it's open to everyone regardless of race. Our name came from uh, our founders, uh, because back in the day, uh, black nurses weren't allowed to be in the American Nurses Association. And so they started their own because they found that they needed to reach out to their people to make sure that we are getting the equality we needed in medi medical care that we did find. We do have a lot of disparities uh, when it comes to African American uh, people. That seems strange that it took so long because I remember growing up at a time when nursing was one of the few professions that were open to black women. When, you know, you had to be a nurse, a school teacher, or a secretary. That was right. it. Yeah. And so it seems strange that it was so long before there was an organization of black nurses. Right, right. It did, it was at, during the time that they were formed um, out of Howard uh, University. Mm -hmm. um, it probably, at that time, probably took them a time to get organized and, and, you know, get the nurses on board, but it was done and it's been successful ever since. So, uh, like you gave, you know, the st statistics of how many we are served, how many nurses are now part of the... Yeah, it uh, says 150,000. Yeah, 150,000 yeah. nurses all over uh, in each state uh, uh, to include the Caribbean here in Hawaii as well, so we're proud of that, that we're here and we have a chapter. So, uh, now, do you, would like, when you have these hurricanes and whatnot, do you go out, like the Red Cross volunteer, to go to other places? Yeah, we actually partner with the Red Cross in those efforts, and so nurses that uh, want to go out and provide those services and to help the victims of hurricanes are always welcome to do that. We do have an outlet for that. Mm -hmm. um, 
we here in uh, Hawaii, our chapter, um, we had all went through the Red Cross training to be, you know, first responders. Uh -huh. So we can be called on upon, uh, upon any disasters here in Hawaii. So that's also something that one of our outreaches as well. So tell us again more about your event on Saturday. This is a beautiful program. Okay, our event on Saturday is a, a, a way that we want to honor our survivors. And at the same time, we want to educate um, our survivors and make sure that the women out there know that there is there are survivors, and survivors are, are, are the true warrior, warriors, and they have went through the journey. And so we like to honor them each year. Susan G. Coleman uh, has supported us in this with a grant. Uh, so we will be uh, um, honoring our breast cancer survivors and bringing awareness and education to other women, because it's open to the public. Again, it's October the 28th. It's at the Croc Center. Um, Where is the Croc Center? The Croc Center is out in Eva Beach. It's um, out where the the rail is, you know, the, the rail starts. So it's the Salvation Army is really the uh, what the Croc Center is. Uh, I don't know the acronym for the K R O C, but it's a beautiful place. We should have a great time. Uh, and in honoring our survivors, we have them um, showing how they went through their journey, and they will be. Uh, doing a parade of fashions to show that they are standing among all women and they are beautiful uh, and then they'll be given their story. So we're just so excited about this event. We have Dr. Sandra Underwood coming. She is a um, nursing professor at the University of uh, Milwaukee in Wisconsin. Um, and so she'll be arriving on island on Friday and will be speaking. So. Uh, please come out and join us. There's no um, uh, tickets that we sold. It's, uh, donations are welcome, but they're not required. And usually all our donations uh, go toward our efforts, the Honolulu Black Nurses Association's efforts in the community uh, doing charitable uh, community events. Uh, we also give a scholarship away to a nursing um, uh, student. And we also will give back to cancer research. Great. Now, it mentions a forum, education forum. The, what for, the forum will be uh, Dr. Underwood speaking. We have a patient navigator coming from Queens uh, Hospital who will be uh, giving information to those underserved and underinsured. What so is a navigator, patient navigator? A patient navigator helps you navigate through the system because oh. the health system can be very complicated. Yes. <laughs> And so they help you navigate through and make sure that you are, get, you know, getting through the system to make sure that you are um, assisted in every area that's necessary. What they usually do is they have the programs. Right now they have uh, BCCP, uh, which is a program that offers free mammograms. So they'll be giving that information to us also on um, October the 28th, and they'll have um, if, for those women that are missed, that's a population that we really would like to reach out to. The ones that are underinsured, um, the one to, ones that are underserved. Uh, so she, the patient navigator will have information, pamphlets, things that will assist them in navigating through the So this system. is open to everybody, not just African American women. Yeah, it's open to everyone and we are reaching out to our, lo our local women here. In Hawaii, um, our um, Pacific Islanders, our, you know, everybody, we're, we're a melting pot here, so everybody's a, a person of color here. So everybody's welcome, come out, we're going to have a good time, have some food, um, we'll have door prizes, and then we'll end it with the uh, parade of fashions, uh, including our breast cancer survivors telling their story. You, I, I tell you, that I am a breast cancer survivor. And many years ago, I was asked if I would be on a calendar, a nude calendar yes. for survivors. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay. I never thought of me as being shy, but I was terrified of taking my clothes off. Right. But once I got there and looked at all these other women 
with no clothes on. I thought, oh, I can do that. So if anybody's interested, <laughs> it is my Facebook page. Oh, okay. The, That's beautiful. Yes. I, yeah. Once I got up the guts to do it, yes. <laughs> and I thought, oh, if everybody else can do it, I can't do it. Yeah. Like I said, I never thought of me as shy. Right. Yeah. And we want women to know that they're beautiful uh, once they go through that journey. Uh, we have women that once they share their story, it's just very empowering, and you'll have a woman sitting there and thinking that they couldn't get through this journey of breast cancer, going through their chemo and their radiation, you know, losing their hair. They don't feel very attractive anymore and are beautiful. And we just want uh, women to know you are beautiful. You are the, the survivors are our true warriors. And so when I look at them, I know that my mom would be proud that I'm, you know, carrying on this fight for breast cancer. We want to just abolish breast cancer. We don't want any more breast cancer. And I think is, that we can do that. Is there a way to, to look at that, not just once you find it, but is there a, a preventive that something, because you know now they do all kind of preventive for other things. Is there a preventive to keep this from growing or, or not? Well, once you have it, it just depends on what, you know, what stages you are uh, but, at. But, but you but, have to have something before you can... So you have to have your, you know, you have to get screened, know your risk. You know, you have to talk to your doctor. You have to know uh, what's normal for you. If you see anything that's unnormal, like, you know, uh, discharge coming from the breast, or if the breast, if there's pain that won't go away, um, any of those kinds of things you should report right away to your doctor. Don't just think that that's normal because pain is really not normal in the body. It's letting you know that something is terribly wrong. You know, we get headaches and we just say, oh, we got a headache, take Tylenol, and then the next day you still have the headache. Knowing that pain is not normal and things that don't go away quickly should always be brought to a doctor's attention so that they can uh, examine you and make sure that whatever it is that they can take care of it in the earlier stages, such as breast cancer, you know. So, um, and just getting your clinical breast exams and your mammograms are very important. And if we do that yearly, as our preventative guidelines tell us to do, I think that we will combat this disease and bring it to a halt. Well, thank you so much for being here. And we look forward to seeing you on Saturday. Yeah. And I am delighted. And thank you so much for spending this time with us. And we'll see you next week. Okay. Thanks for having me on the show. Aloha. Aloha.